Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have our very special guest today. It's Jim from Little Iguanas. Everybody should know Jim because he's been on the show many times. He is part of our podcast community, and he has a podcast of his own that I highly suggest that you go to. Jim is excellent when it comes to working with children. His whole organization focuses on helping children stay safe, and they do this in a very unique way. They make things differently because it's music driven and they teach children how to be safe, how to go about life and make smart choices and protect themselves from any dangers that might occur. But they don't go and they don't lecture and they don't put kids into a group setting when they drill these kids over and over again, like many organizations do. What they do is they create fun music and fun activities that stay in kids' minds. And they have characters that are really cute and fun to look at. And the, between the music and the characters, it's most likely that your child is going to remember them. And it's really great because you want things that teach your child how to be safe and you want it to stick in their head. And a lot of times, a lot of these things that has proven over the years, Jim has even told us about, was that a lot of these kids, as they grew up into their tweens and teens and even adults, they still remembered the songs and they remembered the messages and it stuck in them throughout their lives. So it's great to know that these songs are not only helping people stay safe and stay out of danger, but they're teaching them morals that they could teach their children and also help them become good decision makers. Because when we install good decision making as children, we actually enhance certain parts of the brain that can induce children to become young adults and to learn how to become good decision makers, which can carry through their adult years. And this is what we want for children. So I'm going to let you talk to Jim. And Jim's going to tell you a little about why his program, his organization, Little Iguanas, is so unique and why it's different than others. And I want you to listen to him because he has a lot of great advice to share with you and different things that he has taught children in the past that has helped them in their adult years and in growing up as a child as well. So take it away, Jim. Tell everybody a little about yourself and some of the great things that you've done with these children. Well, it's been a 30 year, uh, this August, it'll be 30 years of saving lives as young as age three, all the way up to 16 year olds. And, you know, when we first started this, many people doubted the program because we taught in such a different format. We taught through play learning you don't you don't play and learn at the same time that's that's forbidden or music you know oh that's you you have to stand over them and preach to them or make them read or do something and for us we just figured you know what as a survivor I call it of the world when I was younger and a survivor of going through life with ADHD and not understanding what ADHD was or no one even understanding it when I was a child being 61 years old, you know, we decided why can't we teach kids in a fun, non-threatening, kid-friendly, music-driven way that while they're playing and they're learning at the same time, why can't we do that? So right. after many, many years of perfecting the program, whether it's the live musicals that go into the elementary schools or to large community events where for 45 minutes we're singing and, and dancing and laughing and learning everything from as simple lessons as buckle up or, or distracting the driver to who a stranger is and what to do if your harm alarm goes off and someone's trying to get you to go with them and you need to run, 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 yell and tell, but where do I run and how do I run and what do I, what do I do? And, you know, most situations when they come, you know, when children are approached by it, they've never learned anything. They've right. never, they may have, they may have been told stuff, but they never learned anything. There's a difference be being t between being told and actually learning stuff. You know, you yes. hear people after a child's been struck by a car, I told them a million times to look both ways before you cross the street. Well, what does that mean? So what Little Iguana has taken is all the safety concerns we have as parents, we've taken it so that you could, 
you now know when to teach it at an age. What age should I be teaching this stuff at? Right. How I should be teaching this stuff, which is very simply using little iguana and the and the fun activities. But what do we expect out of this? We expect to have A, safe kids, B, healthy kids, C, happy kids, and D, very being kind kids. Yes. I noticed on your shelf back there, I see a book called Be Kind. Yes. And, uh, you know, it just triggered in my mind because coming up for our August, you know, is our 30th anniversary and we're kicking off a day called It's Easy to Be Kind. And I, another silly, silly thing that Little Iguana has created was how do we change the world from being mean and rotten to where it was way back when the, you know, the leave it to beaver days, you yeah. know, the shows where people, you know, you look at those shows today and, mm -hmm. and, and you, and you have to chuckle, you know, the Andy Griffith show, the, yeah. you know, everybody was asking, everybody in the show was kind. Everybody in the show said, please. And thank you. And, and everybody helped their neighbors when things were going wrong and they brought pies over or food over and we've lost that totally, totally lost that. So what we yeah. tried to do is we're trying to bring it back. So on, it's easy to be kind day. We want everybody to treat others the way you want to be treated. Right. Maybe become an ambassador for us in your community. All you have to do is share the information, put up some of the posters that just say, this is, it's easy to be kind because I guarantee you if, all of us as human race, we decided that we were going to just treat each other the way we, we wanted to be treated. We'd have no more hatred, mm -hmm. no more racism, no more bias, no more I hate, um, I hurt, no more hurting each other, no more stealing from each other, no more making fun of people because of their 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 shape, their color, their size, you know, if they're boy, they're girl, it doesn't matter, you know, just, just treat each other the way you want to be treated. And you know what happens for our world? Everything becomes great again. Yeah. Everything becomes no more people stealing and hurting, but helping and, and nurturing and giving. And yeah. so that's kind of what this whole day is going to be. And it's funny, I, I, I look down and I see be kind. And it's like, oh, <laughs> our big kindness day. But people, you know, just your kids are only kids for a short period of time. You know, my 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 three children were babies two days ago. Now they're 36 and 35 and 28, 29 years old. I mean, your days, your life goes by so fast. And yeah. so, so much time is spent on the negative and the, and the, and the, you have to do this at a certain time and do it this way and do that, you know, just take a few minutes, breathe, you know, take in a few big breaths together, listen to some music on the radio, maybe sing together loud and, 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 and bad, but who cares? Yeah. You know, and, and just let your soul open up because, you know, it, it, your children aren't going to be there for a long, very long. And yeah. Use, use that time to educate them. You know, the definition I always say to my friends that, you know, they always tell me I'm corny. You know, they always say that, you know, you, you're, you're, you're like Ward, Ward Cleaver on the Leave it to Beaver show. Like I said, you're, you're like Mr. Dad, you know, all the time because you, I see things differently from what people, people see like a child doing this, you know, right away, that kid's a brat. Well, maybe the kid's not a brat. Maybe the kid needs something, but he doesn't know or she doesn't know how to express herself. Yeah. Okay. Because we didn't teach them. I guarantee you parents didn't teach their children how to express themselves, whether they want to scream and yell and cry or they want to, you know, say thank you and please. I mean, you, yeah. you know, I mean, so we need to take that time just to teach our kids you know, this is the way that we want you to act or behave, but there's always room to grow and there's other ways to do things. Just because I tell you something doesn't mean that's the only way. 
And right. it's okay to tell them that, you know, it's my way or the highway. It, it, it's, you know, if we did that, we would never be on the moon, right? Yeah. If it's my way or the highway, oh, how crazy are you to be picking up a cell phone and talking to somebody? You need a big cord that comes out of the wall. Exactly. So for us, you know, the whole world is to treat the people kindly, respectfully, to help our children. And you know what, parents, this is this is me to you as uh, me as a dad to you as other parents. What our mission in life is, is to make our children better than we are. Right. Okay. And that's how society gets better each generation. Because if you make your children worse than what you are, yeah, the next generation is going to suck. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we see that now. We see people hurting each other for no other reason that they're of a different, different um, demographics or, or, or you're, you're this, you're that you're, you know, we see this now more hurt every day. People, you know, I, I hear the baloney from, you know, our government, oh, crime is down. It's like crime's not down. Crime's just not reported. And we just don't convict people. And we're not stupid. None of us are stupid to think that you're telling us the truth. It's not. Right. But it's not their fault. You know, it's not their fault. It's our fault. Right. We created what is out there in society. And if we didn't try as hard as we could to make our children better than what we are, we fail. Mm-hmm. We're just we're just birthing parents or whatever they want to call us, right? <laughs> you can't be called. God forbid you be called a mom or a dad. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, the, the end of the world is the world stops spinning, you know. But that's what we are. We we need to make our children much better than what we are, and our whole worlds change. We can yeah. we can do it in this generation. We just need to focus on it, and the younger we can teach our children all of this, the better. Right. You know, in our society now, the most abused, neglected, and unwanted age group is cradle to three. Wow. Let that sink in for a second, right? That's mm-hmm. newborn to the age of three years old is the most abused and neglected in today's society. I mean, I don't think if people understand these words that are coming out of my mouth right now, cradle, newborn to three. We should be ashamed of ourselves. We should totally be ashamed of ourselves. We should sit back, reflect, not beating anybody up. All I'm asking for is forget the past. As of this moment, when you hear my voice out there in the world, start anew. Yeah. Who cares what happened? Oh, I did. You know, most people are just so ashamed of themselves that they're caught up into I can't change because if I change, I show weakness. I show this change. Change is good. Change is very good because our society changes all around us every day. And we don't do the same things over and over again. We always make fun of our grandparents and stuff, right? How many times have I heard my friends talk about, oh, Jesus, my mom, she's 80 years old and she gets up in the morning and she cooks eggs and she did this and she does this and then she does this and she watches this show at this time and she that's perfect for them. They like that. They're set yeah. in their ways. But we're never going to get ahead if we if we do that constantly. Right. We'll never get out of our circle, our cycle, you know, instead of instead of sitting on the couch today, you know, to watch the show. Why don't you go outside and walk around your house and look at the flowers or go out on the porch and look up at the sky. And, you know, when we were kids, look at clouds and see what kind of funny things we could say, you know, see shapes in that while listening to music. I mean, how many people do that with their kids? That that unbelievably opens, you know, such imagination and, 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 and thought process as you're just sitting there listening to music and, and and absorbing you know everything and observing everything around you the trees the squirrel rolling up the tree to make a nest have you ever said hey honey do you see that squirrel going up the tree they're going to make a nest and they're going to have a family of squirrels and i mean it's simple stuff yeah that can make our world so much better and yet 
we refuse because we're set in our ways and we're going to do it this way or the highway. And, you know, you can't do that. Why, mom? Because, because why? Because I said so. Right. You know, explain to them. So then they understand. So they have a knowledge of what, you know, you don't want them to go because you're afraid that they might get hurt. They might do something wrong. They might hang out with the wrong people. They might do this. Explain that to them. Right. But can't you just explain it? You know, I'm only saying this because my fears are, you know, when I was a young kid, you know, yeah. I've had a little friend of mine that got hurt really bad because he didn't do something. You can explain it to them. You, you know, just don't give them that. I walked up the hill, you know, both ways, uphill, both ways, the school in the snow with no shoes on carrying my sister on the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just give them something that, that they can build off of. That's, right. you know what I mean? Like give them, give them that inch to let them go the mile. Right. And, but you got to start that inch. It's got to be the positive, you know? Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, you know, why is it that you have to look at your kid and be upset or, or angry? Why, why can't it, you, it takes less energy to be a happy person than it does to be a mean person. That's very true. And it's better for your soul. Mm -hmm. It's better for you inside because all the people that talk about Sally down the street, can you believe Sally's new here? Can you believe Sally got this car? Oh, do you believe Sally does this? That's just because they're not happy with who they are. Yes. So we need to become happy with who we are. Right. And then we could go out into the world. But for little Iguana, our world is to teach, reach the kids two years old to eight to 10 years old. Right. Music driven, fun. Hey guys. You know, look at the silliness on, on the stage shows. You know, it's music and happy and in our programs online, like our memberships online that people can, you know, download and become become a member. There's there's activity sheets and crafts and, and, and snacks you can make that are fun, whether it's, you know, ants on a log where you have celery and peanut butter and put some raisins on it or a school bus made of banana yeah. wheels and you know take the time for one you know 10 minutes i mean 50, what's it going to take you maybe 15 minutes to get everything together right throw on a couple of songs play you know make a craft or make an activity together i'm not saying you have to learn all 20 lessons at one time and yeah and just take snippets of it maybe take it along in your car let them listen to the music, you know, explain what the music means. You know, for us, everything is simple. We got to make it simple. As my staff says, if I can't understand it, a two-year-old's not going to be able to understand it because they right. relate to me as a two-year-old. I'm the biggest kid in the world. I'm the biggest, oldest kid in the, in the universe. So they say, if, if, if Jim can handle it, then a three-year-old can handle it. Mm -hmm. If I can't handle it, they're not going to give it to a three-year-old. Right. So we find out that kids are much, much smarter than we allow or we we give them credit for. Yes. What do we say to our kids, right? We want them to be rocket scientists. We put them in school. We want them to be so smart. And then by the fourth grade, they're smarter than us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and then, and then we're mad because they're smarter than us. Right. <laughs> you know, don't tell me I know. No, no, we don't know. These kids just got it on on their phone five minutes ago. And it <laughs> says this. So we're totally wrong. Right. You know, I mean, no, drinking, drinking this, you know, the 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 old remedies in the house, you know, the 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 different the, the different things your grandparents, you know, yeah. came up with, you know, like that has no bearing whatsoever on life, but they did it because it was, you know, something they've done all their lives. Right. But thank God we know that, you know, you don't take this medicine for this because that, what you just took gave you high blood pressure, you know? Right. I mean, <laughs> so, so we figured it out, you know? We're, so I just tell everybody, enjoy your kids, have fun with them. They're going to be gone soon. And that's the saddest part in my life right now is 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 you know the the joy i have is because i get to work with my kids a lot 
Yeah. But the sadness is I don't see him, you know, when we're sitting around on the couch watching TV or Wheel of Fortune or, you know, battling against each other on Jeopardy, yeah. you know, or or whatever it was that we did as 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 a family growing up or going to their games or their sporting events and and watching them grow, you know. I I hear a lot of again my friends in the world they, they they'll say things like um you know I go hey why don't you where, where what are you doing and oh my kids got a game right now and it's like well why didn't you go to it oh I don't want to watch a bunch of little kids run around kicking a ball you know and you sit there and you just go but you're going to miss that moment of that yeah. little time where maybe he does or she does something incredibly cool yeah and you didn't get to see it or or helped another kid on the field, picked them up off the ground, that moment where, you know, he was the best human being in the world for doing yeah. that. You didn't get to see it because you're not gonna go to it because again, that that we have to unlearn. What what was the thing with the with the Star Wars with the little green goblin guy there? The, oh. the, the Yoda, right? Yoda, Yoda yeah. Yogurt. No, no, no. You're the almighty yogurt. No, just plain yogurt. But that was uh, space balls. But, but the mm. yoga, the, the 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 guy would, you know, you must unlearn what you have learned, and mm. that is really so prevalent to today's yes. world. Is really we learn is. stuff wrong. Yeah. And the stuff that we learned right, like the kindness and the respect. In the days, like if I if I saw Mrs. Savitsky across the street raking her lawn, I went over there and raked Mrs. Savitsky's lawn with her. Right. Because that was the human thing to do. Right. Okay? And I did that because that was instilled in me as a young child that when you saw people in need and and needed your help, you did that without looking for money looking for if they gave you something hey great man you scored a big one right and usually your parents told you to go back and give it back to them anyways right. you know? and like, yeah oh. but but you know but, and then you have to argue with them because now they're mad at you because you're giving back the money that they wanted to give you or or something you know like yeah i remember when i was a young boy i, I would shovel my entire neighborhood i'd get up at five o'clock because my father had to go to work and I had to shovel my whole sidewalk and driveway before I could go out and start shoveling other people's driveways. And I would go out and I had this big giant metal shovel that my grandfather made of steel. My friends couldn't even lift it. I mean, it was a steel plate bent in half. And when you pushed it, sparks would fly off the sidewalk because it was metal on, on concrete. Yeah. And people... People would stand at the window just to watch me shovel as sparks would fly in the back of it, mm -hmm. getting the snow off of it. And they wouldn't let anybody else shovel their sidewalk. No, right. no, no. Jimmy Tomaszewski's coming. And then the last one, the last house, I always saved the last house because it was this big ass driveway that went all the way down and there's stairs that went all the way down, but it was it was uh, the Pulaski's, Peter and Wilma Pulaski. And they were just the oldest, nicest Polish couple I've ever met in my life. And they taught me a lot. They, We would sit by the stove at the end of, I would get it done. And they would save like the box of Russell Stover's candy from somebody gave it them during yeah. the year. But they knew snow was coming and they had to give Jimmy something. They didn't have money, but they... They had to have something. And we would sit in front of this big stove. And one spot was coal. You would put coal in it. Another spot, you could put wood in it. Another spot was gas. And and I mean, it was a heavy monstrosity of a stove. And we would sit there after we were done. And they would just tell me about life and explain to me things that my parents were trying to tell me, but I didn't want to listen to my parents. Yeah. But here, listening to these two older people telling me the story, and they would bring out the box of candy, or she would make something to eat for me, knowing that I would be at the end of the day and I'd be hungry. Or they would bring out, you know, the the little um, Manischewitz, you know, the the black bear, the uh, Manischewitz brandy. And oh yeah, it, yeah. It would. It was. It was a Jewish brandy, you know. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, and. Uh, 
they they would give a little here's a nine-year-old eight-year-old you know oh it'll it'll warm your cockles whatever <laughs> cockles were, i didn't care i was eight years old i mean <laughs> they go to jail right now for stuff like that but they just you know but it was just like all my life. And when I when I moved out of my neighborhood, I was going to college to play ball. And the people in my neighborhood actually had a party. My parents didn't have it. These people had it. And it was so much fun to to be part of it, you know, and yeah, and just to see everything and, and be in that world. It was just so nice. Yeah. To be there. So. Oh. I got I got to give somebody my keys. Sorry everybody. <laughs> <laughs> somebody came in and asked for my keys. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that little iguana's big mission is to go back to those days. To teach our children respect and kindness and have fun with them. Do the simple things, go for a walk. Nothing has to cost you money. You know, everybody goes, "Oh, I don't have the money for that." Yeah, you do. All you need is the time. Exactly. Go, go, go skim some rocks on a pond. Go mm -hmm. look at birds. Get a bird, you know, go online. We saw this bird, this bird, and this bird. Take a picture of them. Let's find out what they're called. Let's find out where they're from. Right. Cost you no money. And, and, and who knows what that turns into. Right. So that's all. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. <laughs> so if when you know i think it's wonderful what you're doing and and if someone came up to you and said well why can't my kids you know they're already getting taught things in school what what's different between your organization and what they're learning in school about safety and and other things well in school there's not much of the safety being taught you know yeah. in a way that they can understand it if mm -hmm. they are taught certain things yeah you know, it's mainly, it, it, it's mostly the, um, you know, the simple things, you know, mm -hmm. and and even then, I mean, you know, let, more children die every year from preventable accidental injuries. Yeah. So how is that even possible that they're dying more from preventable, which yeah. means that they can be prevented, accidental, which you got, you, you know, and injuries i mean yeah why is that because mm -hmm. we don't teach them we tell them whether yeah. school or whomever you know um we get a lot of calls from schools we have this incredible problem with kids getting hit by cars or we have this incredible problem with you know this and that can you help us we go into our program sing and dance kids get it they understand it you know it's it's yeah in a simple format for them, not talking over their heads mm -hmm. or not talking below them either. Right. You know, you, know, you don't talk to a, you don't talk to a five-year-old. Oh, because then you know what the five-year-old does? The five-year-old talks like, oh, baby, you know, and I'm yeah. not saying use ginormous words or, you know, just explain things to them exactly. in a format that they can understand. And that's the difference between us. We, we didn't invent the safety rules we just perfected how to teach the safety rules to a certain individual age group you know and that is what we perfected and can you give us some examples of some success stories to share with people sure i mean there there's there's tons whether it's you know um autistic children you know one of the one of the major universities up here in cambridge massachusetts did a study on our program. They said, wow, not only do you do what you say you do for children uh, that aren't on the spectrum, yeah, but my goodness, you do such wonderful programs for autistic and in, in, in different level learning um, program people, yeah. uh, children. So we tried, to, we tried to do a program for autistic, didn't try, we did a program, a bunch of programs in an autistic school. Yeah. And looking through the audience the teachers were crying they were literally crying because the children who they normally would have to hold their hands or be part of on them all the time yeah were just sitting there and enjoying the show and singing and dancing and laughing 
And it was just amazing to see the people that spend the time with them every day. Yeah. Or going into a into a child care facility months um, before in a situation where we're teaching harm alarm, that funny feeling inside when things aren't right and you need yeah. to share them, even though you're threatened or you're 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 put on notice that something will happen to you or your family if you say anything. Yeah. Well, we did a program, went in their went in their school, something happened that, you know, awful molestation to the ch child who was there. And because he was in it, because he went through our harm alarm program, a couple months had gone by and he started regressing, soiling his pants, nightmares, not eating. They brought him to the doctors. It mm -hmm. was, you know, it's growing pains. He'll get over it soon. On his drive home, he said, mommy, we have to call Lil Iguana. Because Lil Iguana was in his school months before that talking about the harm alarm. And he said, Little Iguana said that he could help me. So Little Iguana went to his house. We went on his bunk bed because that was his rocket ship. We flew to the moon so that no one can hear us. And we had some cheese because we all know the moon's made out of cheese. Mm -hmm. And he started sharing stuff. And that was the first success story 26 years ago that we like to wow. share 27 years ago that we like to share um, all the way up to 16 year old who it just shows that little iguana programs can work at a very young age, which is three. I mean, you're not going to get much younger than that folks. Yeah. Okay. All the way up to 16 year olds who, when she was in second grade, she performed with us on stage because we bring children up from the audience. Yeah. She came up on stage and she did run, 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 <laughs> yell and tell. It's what you do if someone's trying to get you to go with them and you don't have permission to go with them. You run away, you yell, you tell. Well, this girl, second grade, eight years old, participated in this show, eight years goes by she's 16 years old walking down the street and a level three sex offender tries to abduct her wow. she runs away runs into a store goes behind a counter screaming and yelling they call the police they said how'd you get away she said that silly stupid song that little iguana taught me eight years before that she remembered it popped wow. into her head and i always say people say oh come on i always say to people when you were a kid what did you learn in fourth grade? People, I don't know. I go, and then I mentioned songs that were during that year. Yeah. And they could sing them or they know them. And I'm like, so why can't you sing education to our children and play learn? So that's kind of like, and that and that's just some that's that that's just some of the many that we know about. We we know that there's many more that we don't know about because. We meet adults during our life that say, hey, when you were when you did the show, I was a kid and, you know, my sister and me, you know, kind of thing. And, and you hear stories 20 something years later. And yeah. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I love I love what I do. Yeah. I love waking up in the morning. It's a it's a great thing. Well, you definitely could tell that you love what you do. And I think it's great what you do. You know, I think you really make a huge impact on, on our society. I, and it's so important. And, and, and that fact you gave in the beginning, you know, how you mentioned that kids are most neglected between the ages, you know, the first their first couple of years of life. And those are the most important years. People don't realize it, even though they're not going to be able to remember them later. Subconsciously, they do remember it. And it does have an impact on their personality, their self-esteem, lots yep. of things it affects. And people don't realize that the, the as soon as that child comes out of their mother's womb, everything we do affects that child and everything they hear affects that child. And, you know, and, and the love you give them and the affection you give them, that also will show kids how to love, how to trust, how to be able to show expression of compassion. And if you neglect a child of those things, that child is going to have a very tough time later in life exemplifying those behaviors. They even, you know, we had a doctor who came on and he was talking about how the embryo, when when once the, the embryo goes down the mother's canal and it and it's fertilized with the man's sperm, 240 characteristics are already pre-developed 
by the time it goes down the fallopian tube. So if you think about that, that's pretty amazing that 240 characteristics of that person, that child's personality is already, already established. So imagine, and then they also say when, when you're pregnant, talk to the baby, you know, read to the baby, you know, try not to yell, whatever you say, it it has an impact on the, on the child. So imagine once the child is born, if you're not, if you're neglecting and you're not showing compassion, and if you're not showing expressions of love, the impact it's going to have on that child, you know, exactly, exactly. People, people don't realize that the zero to three is very important your foundation in life your moral whatever you want to call it not religious i'm saying your moral the right from wrong the humanity part of it you're set by five Mm -hmm. set by five yeah so 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 when my baba and my Gigi used to tell me you know you don't hang around with little freddie you know he's five years old but he's a little brat he's gonna Mm -hmm. grow up to be a big brat because what's Freddie going to be at 10 or 15 if no one fe- fixes Freddie at five? It's going to have the same characteristics, the same whatever it is, mm-hmm. but he's going to be bigger and stronger. Right. Five more years, he's bigger and stronger. Yes. <clears throat> but nothing's changed. Right. The behavior part hasn't changed. Right. So you need to focus. If anything, our children should be so nurtured and so loved and so educated at a young age because that's when everything is formed in it right so that's why programs that start at 8 and 10 and 12 are harder to catch up to these kids because it's already set yeah an abuse an abuse and neglect just I mean, this isn't me making up the things. I just go by what the government and other people say. And then then you yeah. have to multiply it by 10 times because you know that, you know, it's not not even close to what they're saying. But but when you when you are abused or neglected at a very young age, as soon as you come out of the womb to whatever it is, you have one to 12 learning disabilities, learning disabilities right. embedded in you before you go to school. <laughs> so you're starting school with one to 12 disabilities because right. of the abuse and neglect. Mm-hmm. So th- really don't have much of a chance. Right. Do you? Right. So that's why we really need to focus on it. And and I always tell people, not everybody's out to, you know, cut out to be a parent. I mean, it's a hard, hard job. It's the hardest job in the world yeah. is to be a good mom and a good dad. Yeah, that's the hardest. Anybody could be a mom and a dad. Exactly. The hardest job is to be a good mom and a good dad. A hundred percent. And and that's that's what we should all focus on. You know, don't don't worry about having two cars, three boats, golfing every weekend, going out with, you know, I mean, take the time to 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 be with them. Yes. You can still do other things. I'm not saying be totally self, you know, selfish, you know, and uh, <laughs> what I'm saying is allow allow that time and those kids to grow up and to learn. Like I ne- I never even really knew what my dad did. Yeah. You know, I di- I didn't know what my dad did. I didn't know my ga- dad did this and my dad did that and because you never talked about anything. You never were right. part of their never saw their lives you know they got up at five went to work got home at six Mm -hmm. you you ate and went to bed yeah you know and on the weekends they were doing something you know whatever it was you know you had to you had to work with them but they never you never really talked with them right talk with your kids you know tell them what your life was yeah you know explain to them so that they understand where you're coming from too 100 percent definitely now, if, if you had to take, you know, a couple of takeaways, a couple of things you like to emphasize and ex- and maybe emphasize too about the music learning, what do you want the listeners to leave this podcast remembering? Well, whether it's using Little Iguana or anyone else that does it, if they do, um, what we do, really just focus on as young as you can. Too young, there's no such thing as too young. 
how I know, you know, people do the studies like they said, you know, music playing, the baby's kicking in the womb because mm -hmm. they can hear it. They feel it, you know, yeah. play it. They may not be able to talk back to you yet because that motor skill wasn't developed. Exactly. But they're absorbing it and they yes. understand it. So the first things I would always say is teach them as young as you can. Teach them with music. Show them the love. Show them the respect. Teach them to be treat others the way you want to be treated. If you if you could teach your kids anything, teach them that. Yeah. Respect everyone for who they are, what they do. Find out that who you are as well. Right. Because well rounded, self worth, self esteem person, you know, there's nothing you can't do. Yeah. You, know, you have that self worth for you. Some people call them cocky. I don't call them cocky. I just tell them that they're they they're not full. Of, they're not full of what they're full of themselves. They know what they want to be, what they want to do. Nothing can hold them back. Right. You know, and, 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 and nurture that. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's so important. I, I think I love that you're music driven. I love that, you know, everything you do has, you know, has purpose and, and every it's backed by music. I think it's so important. I think people learn much better with music. I think music can be very common. It can be very motivated. It's all how we put it together. And, but the, when we put together the words and especially when they rhyme and they go together, it stays in our heads and we don't forget. We really don't, you know, if something's played X amount of times or sung amount of, a certain amount of times, you don't really forget it. It stays with you, you know, and, uh, and having these these good skills and 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 having you know important safety you know um, suggestions embedded in your head is so important you know and it could it could save so many lives and and the, what you learn you're going to teach to your your next generation whether you have kids or not to your nieces or to your nephews or to the, to kids that you know it will be passed on and it will move as a cycle. And you also offer like a free trial membership, correct? Yeah. Yep. I will uh, send that to you so you can share it with everyone. There's a few things that we do for free. You can use the Laguana site. There's a lot on the site that you could use for free anyways. Um, you know, we don't want anyone to be shunned out. There are, you know, memberships that they could purchase, which, just gives you more, you know, more yeah. access to a lot of things, including parent groups, you know, that we are putting together. You need some information. You need to, to understand how to um, how to teach something in a way to your child. You can contact us. I mean, it gives you a lot of opportunity, but yeah, we will send you that and you could post it up and uh, share it with with everyone. We would love we would love that. And can you share to your website to everybody so they have it? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Our our site is www.lil, which is Lil Iguana, I G U A N A U S A dot org. Um, it used to be little, but because kids can't say little, they can only say little. <laughs> we had to change our whole branding just because of it, but it's littleiguanausa.org. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Jim, for coming on the show. You. And, Appreciate you know, I, I want everyone to remember that Jim has a podcast um, uh, on, our, on our site. He's also part of our podcast community. And all his episodes are on his podcast. And you can find them on The Advisor. And he has some great episodes that talk about a lot of different important topics. So pay attention to that. And, you know, take time out to listen to it and maybe listen to it with your child and discuss it afterwards so you could learn from each other. And also tell everybody once again when your special um, kindness day is. Well, we're going to kick it off on August 11th. And what happens is we have a song that we created and we're asking everybody, whether it's a, a children's choir in an elementary school, a church choir for adults or kids doesn't have to be just kids. It could be a band. It's a song called It's Easy to Be Kind. And what we'd like people to do is when it happens, sing your version, record your version, send it to us so that we could share it with the world because mm -hmm. this is a worldwide day. 
So 32 countries will at least be able to hear your version of our song. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's just, you know, we're looking for different businesses, different different moms or individuals in a city or a town to be the ambassador for the day in their town. And, you know, we share the information that they need. All they have to do is hand out posters and let people know about it, share it with their, you know, following and their family. But it's going to be a good day. It's going to be all about how we change our world for, for the better. That sounds amazing. So everybody, get your singing voice ready. Get your friends together. <laughs> and I, I want to hear some songs. So send them out to Jim. Yeah. And, you know, you could always email him and on the website, correct? You can find yes, all you your can information. Yes, you can email directly through me. Yeah, through the site to me. Awesome. Yep. yep. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Jim, for Thanks. coming back on the show. And everybody, once again, make sure you check out Jim's podcast and the Little Iguana podcast. And, you know, thank you once again. This has been amazing. Thank you.